I'm here to partly retell the slum story. I was born and grew up in Kibera. And I think I had a typical childhood, any kid in Kibera old. And the interesting thing, I don't remember feeling poor. Not that it was easy, but I didn't have the feeling that I was poor. But when I started working, or oh, the many times I re listened to stories about Kibera and other slums, it's, it starts and ends with crowded spaces, open sewers, and crashing poverty. And yeah, there is, there is that too. But the lived experience is a little bit different. Amid is all that, there are tracks of Victoria's moment. And this moment, they either push us away, slightly away from the world we're born into, or give us a reason to be happy in a place you ordinarily not find a reason to be happy. And it's those moments that, to me, tell our story better than the open sewers, crowded spaces, and crushing poverty. To me, those little steps, those victorious moments, was becoming a lawyer or working to get towards that. And when I graduated, I was all ready. I wanted to leave and really happily doing so. But I realized I'd lost every boy I grew up to crime. It was a big number, like dozens of them. And that's not the sad part. The sad part is most of them died happy. And talking to them, it's like, that, through that, they had a moment when they weren't poor, and they were ready to pay for the price for that. And I felt that was wrong. And I felt that there could be a way we could come together and try to break the poverty cycle. And that's how List was birthed, like a grassroots movement to break the poverty cycle and retell the slum story in a more balanced way. And another thing is to reach to create a platform to reach out for that little help, you need to break the poverty cycle. Not charity, a fighting chance, which I think we denied most of the time. Some times back, I think two years ago, I went to the Belgium embassy. I was denied a visa. It was the second time at the Belgium embassy, and the first time overall. And I, I was so crushed. When I went home, I found this guy, and he told me, you know, it's a gunfight out there, and all we have are really blunt knives. We don't stand a chance unless we live by the gun. And, okay, not really condoning crime, but he told me, I wish they had given you the, the visa. It would have convinced me there's a way out. You know, like you went to school, it should be easier for you, but it's not. I didn't think much of that. Okay, he's, 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 passed, on, he's passed on since. I didn't think much of that, but the second, the third time I went to the Belgium embassy, I carried that with me. They didn't give me the visa again. This time, oh, they did, but it was conditional. I had to supply a few documents, and I would be given the visa. So when I was leaving the visa, I told that woman, you know, this is the third time I'm applying to this embassy. So it's in the cards I'll go to Belgium. It may not happen today, but someday. But if I go back home without visa, I'll be supporting someone's claim that the only way you get out of this place is through a gun. And to most of the people, it will be like, it doesn't matter how hard you work or how smart you are, it's an impossible place to live. So from that moment, it became larger than just me. To me, getting that visa was very important at that moment, and I told the lady that. Okay, she didn't give it to me. <laughs> but on Sunday, <laughs> but she called me on a Sunday morning and asked me, when is your flight? I told her it's on Monday. She told me, come to the embassy and collect your visa. I was like, in a Sunday. Like, I'm traveling to the embassy just to give you the visa. And I did. And it meant a lot that, that moment. Like, the, the, the many struggles and stumbling block on the way to breaking the poverty cycle. And that's why we need help, removing the stumbling blocks more. And in closing, I'm not trying to say, retell a different story of the slum. All it said is there. But can we look at it a little bit differently. The deeper story of it, beyond the open sewers, what else, crowded spaces, crashing poverty, there's more to that. And I think if we concentrate on that, we relieve so many people from it. A couple of days ago, I had a meeting with one of the guys who grew up there. He was awarded an award for being one of the best pathologists in the region. And when he, when he started talking, it's not because me, him, and others who make it are, are better than any of the rest of the kids we grew up. Sometime along the way, like we had a little help in getting a, a quality education, and our life turns different. And that's the story like we want to tell in a more balanced way. Thank you.